In this video, we will look at traditional urban drainage systems. I use the term traditional to distinguish it from water sensitive design systems, which we looked at in the previous video and which we will look at in more detail in later videos. This slide shows a traditional urban drainage system. It differs from the rural drainage system in that it has curb and channel uh, and a stormwater system. The road has a camber, which causes the surface water to run off the side of the road where it hits the channel in the curb and channel. The water flows along the channel to a catch pit or splay pit. Catch pits or splay pits have a grate on the top or in the side, which allows the runoff to drop into the catch pit. From the catch pit, the runoff flows into the stormwater system. The stormwater system then conveys it to safe disposal in local streams or channels. Looking at the curb and channel, the curb and channel is actually two systems. The channel, it's lower part, conveys the water to the catch pits, while the curb forms the edge of the road. The curb and channel is usually cast as one unit, as shown in the photo above. The curb and channel casting machine is basically a moving form. Special concrete is dropped into the top of the curbing machine, which then forms it into curb and channel as it moves along the line. Note also that there's a string line there to guide the operator to make sure that he gets the curb and channel in the right place. Uh, the curb and channel is actually laid on a layer of compacted gravel. The water table is the top of the saturated soil layer. In other words, the voids are totally full with water. It moves up and down when there is heavy rain. Uh, this diagram shows the situation during a very heavy rainfall. The water table, this dashed blue line, has extended into the sub-base. This is not a good situation as excessive water in the voids between the aggregate particles can weaken the sub-base or the base course. This is because sub-base and base course rely on contact between aggregate particles for their strength. Water in the gaps between the particles can help lubricate them and lessen the strength of the contact. Also, water trapped in the voids can create hydrostatic pressures which cause them to push apart. These factors result in the reduction in the strength of the pavement and can result in its failure. Therefore, we want to keep the water out of the sub-base and base course layers as much as possible. And in fact, we need it below the level of the subgrade as well because it can soften and, and uh, compress when it's wet as well. So we do that by installing subsoil drains under the road. This animation shows the what happens when we install subsoil drains. They remove the subsoil water, causing the water table to dip around the drains, resulting in the water table dropping to below the subbase. Subsoil drains may also be called under-channel drains. The bottom diagram uh, here shows a, uh, the details of a typical subsoil drain. It consists of a perforated pipe with drainage aggregate, which is gravel with no fines in it, to allow maximum water flow to the pipe. The subsurface water flows into the pipe through the perforations, then flows along the pipe to disposal. This is the same detail that we had for a um, rural subsoil drain. They are the same thing. Uh, looking at the top diagram, we can see that disposal of the subsurface water uh, usually flows into the catch pits, where it combines with the surface water before flowing to the stormwater system for disposal.